Ben's friend. Hey Grubby, what is your opinion on new Sergeant Hammer? I'm 100% win rate with her in ladder. And she actually seems strong. Post buffs. You know, I would play her again. Post buffs. I did have a good team, so it remains to be seen exactly when to pick her. But I think she's at least situationally viable now. She's kind of sne sneakily uh, quite good. All right. We just released a new patch for Heroes of the Storm to apply balance changes and a few bug fixes. Alongside this patch, we've also manually corrected rankings and matchmaking ratings for a small number of hero and team league players who rose or fell more than an entire league, which is five divisions. For example, from Platinum 2 to Diamond 1. There is a recent forum post here about it as well. Uh, this is the 20 December 2017 patch, Wednesday. So let's take a look without further ado. One thing we always do, funny th funny little thing, is to uh, see our dog and to give him that treat that uh, he was due so that he can go have a nice play play with the treat. Okay. And one thing we always do is that as soon as we see the hero names, we try to make a prediction whether or not it's going to be buffs or nerfs. And I'll turn down the music just a little bit so that we can hear the text, my, my narrating a little bit better. So, Hanzo, I'm going to guess birth. A nerf to his PvE and a buff to his Stormbow. Random guess. I think it's going to be nerf and buff, just to kind of balance out talents. Nova, I already heard from you guys, and I'm going to pause the alerts for a bit, but thank you very much for subbing. Nova, I'm expecting a nerf. Thrall, I already heard from you guys, it's a buff, so there we go. Uh, Nazibo, I'm expecting a buff, because he's such a late game hero. I would love for him to have a little bit more spider power, and a little bit less tight to his level 20, so I'm expecting a buff here. A buff for early game and a nerf for late game. For Alex Strasa, I expect a buff as well, actually. I don't think she's too OP or too weak. Maybe a reshuffling. We'll see. Brightwing, I expect a buff. Lily, she just got two buffs in a row when everyone else got nerfed. And yet she still doesn't see play. I think she's better than what you would think. But it seems like they really want to make Lily possible. So I'm going to guess a buff to Lily. We'll see. Lucio, I'm expecting a nerf. He's the number one support right now. But I wouldn't know where they would take it. I have no prior knowledge to the fact that Lucio would be changed. So it's pretty hard to guess for me. But I'm going to expect maybe a movement speed nerf. Maybe about 5% movement speed nerfs to his uh, aura. Just a guess. Stukov, I really couldn't say. I'm not even going to guess. I'm going to... I'm going to guess nerf. I'm going to guess nerf. But I, I wouldn't mind either way. Artanis, I think he's not bad. I think he's quite good. But I'm going to expect a buff. Just because he's not meta at HCC. Diva, I expect a buff. Her damage and tankiness in mech form is a little bit weak. So I hope for some mech buffs. And Garrus, the most hated villain. Alongside with Genji in the Nexus. I heard from you guys already. Not just a nerf, but even a change of his design for Q. So let's see. Hanzo. A little bit more da damage on this Dragon Strike. Alright, alright. No change. Dragon Strike buff. Just his lesser used alt. I think that's fair. It was weak. And now it's stronger. 10% buff. Nova gets fewer health. Snipe gets less damage. And lethal decoy less damage. Really simple. Small nerfs. Her win rate has been great, 60% plus. 60% plus win rate, even in Masters Hero League. And so I think this is fine. She's still going to be good, but she's not going to be as OP. Thrall, excited about this one. Yeah. 4 to 5% bon uh, Yeah. 4.8% bonus attack damage, roughly. That's nice. Now, I never take this talent, so let's see if this could make it outperform Frostwolf... Uh, Grace talent. CDR. Oh, okay. So this is the spell shield that allows you to CDR every time you do your trade. 
I would say probably this is still viable compared to Grace now. It's it definitely wait. Cooldown reduction. Right, 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 right. Reduction. Yeah, I would say that makes Spirit Shield probably viable. If you really need that burst protection that cannot be uh, attained by the healing of your Frostwall of Grace, which is to press the D button and get the healing. Spirit Shield could just be an answer. And I think it's a really cool proprietary spell shield that only Thrall has. So, cool change. And this. I'm gonna play a lot more Thrall. I mean, my Thrall win rate in Hero League is like 5-1. So, and last season it was like 6-3. I think he's... Uh, I think he's nice. It's not too much either, but I definitely think it helps. Not sure if he will see pro play, but he should be pretty good in Hero League. Uh huh. I predicted this. Did not predict this, but I think it's fair because Gargantuan is way better. And this is a fair nerf because Gargantuan is way too tanky and good. Gargantuan is still the better alt, by the way, despite these two things. But maybe you'll just be a little bit less guilty if you take the wrong alt, Ravenous Spirit. This is fair because they're a little bit weak. A little bit more return. This, that's fine. It's the probably the weakest talent right now. And less level 20 spike. So overall, I would say Nazebo got nerfed. Less of a power spike at 20. And uh, about 5.5% damage buff on corpse spiders. Some quick maths. And a nerf to Gargantuan health. Now, there's very few people that actually killed Gargantuan because you start working on it. And it's just not worth unloading 3k plus damage uh, on Gargantuan to kill it usually. It's better just to go away. And and these two, this talent doesn't get picked much. So I would say Nazebo got nerfed. So I will pr definitely probably be a little bit more enthusiastic about discouraging Nazebo picks on my team. I suspect his win rate is going to drop a lot. It has been dropping a lot since the laning changes and it should continue to do so. He still has great voice lines though so I will probably still like to play him myself but if you like winning it's better not to take him for the most part. Of course he can win you know all these things should be taken with a grain of salt but overall I would say it's not fantastic. Lifebinder boss. Ah, I should have predicted this because uh, actually it makes sense. Yeah. CDR, mana cost, and this one buff and damage reduction. I think this is all fair. This encourages you to use Cleansing Flame a little bit more to heal allies. Always the less exciting hero uh, choice. We want to kill everyone with our dragon. But the healing part was double healing in terms of how much damage you could do on the opponent. This will encourage it a little bit more, while also making her a little bit less lethal, which I think is fair, because she has giant reach with Cleansing Flame. And it just kind of reshuffles the power balance between two alts that really don't have the same power or pick rate. So I think it's a good change. And I think this is fair. It's the only level 16 talent that is really viable right now. Because of how much it outperforms the others, it makes Dragon Queen last so long. It's still a good talent, but definitely weaker than before. I expected Bright Ring buff, and it's true. More polymorphs and cheaper on the mana. This makes Bright Wing even better to deal with divers like Genji, Illidan, and Tracer. Good buff. It's what she needs. Her healing output is still pretty low, so for the most part, I would still recommend Bright Wing almost exclusively as a second support. And she performs that job better now. Lily, more healing from the Cloud Serpent. Wind Serpent, cooldown reduction granted per hero hit by Blinding Wind is increased from 3 to 4 seconds. This does make her an incredible mana. Oh, mana user consumption hero. An incredible mana user. The CDR helps, but yeah. <laughs> serpent sidekick, cloud serpent duration bonus. <laughs> <clears throat> 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 
Um, Cloud Serpent duration bonus granted per attack from half a second to 0.6. Okay. Safety sprint duration. Okay. Let's go. This is the cleanse. Now instead of range 4, it's 6. And Gale Force. Wait, wasn't it already 75? Oh, this is the auto attacks. When you auto attack people that have blind, you get a bit more damage. Overall, buffs across the board. So if Lily wasn't viable yet, at least in Hero League, she should be now. And in fact, in competitive, I think Lily's viable now as well. Because her she has cleanse. There are very few supports with cleanse in competitive. Rhaegar, Brightwing, Karazim at 16, Lily, and Uther. Once you ban some of those. And it's a cleanse that heals. It now has range 6. And if I'm not mistaken, it can be CDR'd. This is actually ginormous. My dog looked at me. I made a weird voice. Legit, guys. Lily is valid now, I think. Lucio. Less healing from Amp It Up. And that's it. I think that's fair. It's not the movement speed that I thought will be changed. But uh, he is the top support pretty much. So I think that's a fair nerf. Stukov. Less mana. Okay, a small nerf to his mana. I think that's fair too because he was almost completely mana unsensitive when you take one good spread. This wasn't per se the most popular talent anymore. A few months ago, yes. But right now it's top off. Which gives bonus healing over time on plus 60% health targets. Top off is good because your heal puts them there over 60. And then even the next incremental ticks allows you to get that bonus crit heal. So overall it really fits Stukov. And uh, I would say, yeah, top off is probably still the best now. But this is great for laning, great for Braxis holdout and now it's gone. Aha! Sorry, my dog looked at me again. I made a sound. Go, 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 go to your bed. Yeah, I did make a sound, but patch notes are so exciting. Uh, chrono Surge, attack speed. This is amazing. Keep in mind that because Artanis' trait relies on his own auto attacks, uh, this kind of talent allows you to make your sustain better as well. A level 7 competes with follow through, Solarite Reaper, which is the Q initial damage dash, and then the Graviton uh, thing, the warp sickness, the, the slow after you flip someone off. So this one is you flip someone off and then you attack them really fast, which is nice. I, I'm excited about this one. Together with Seasoned Marksman and other talents, this could be quite strong. Uh, Templar Steel, cooldown reduction increase. So I never take this one. Generally people go triple strike. And what's also good is the shield, the plasma burst shield. 40% spell armor during shield and post shield. Um, Q allows you to do what Artanis did at release. Keep queuing through people and keep getting your shield back. It makes for some pretty funny shenanigans. Though I'm still not sure that you would really want to go for this one per se, but... Yeah. Oh, wow. 10 extra spell armor. Not bad, Hierarch of the Dalam. Now, these are three talents that saw a little bit less use, except maybe for this one. So, I don't think it's going to make a big impact on Artanis. Probably. Two bonus auto attack damage and nothing else would have helped him more than all this. But I could be wrong. This is a pretty significant increase. Yes. Yes. I don't know what it was before, but she got nerfed in her basic attack damage in mech form. What this makes so much better is Diva's wave clear in mech form. Now, I want to introduce you guys to my builds page, which uh, is robogrub.com slash builds. Which looks like this. Now if you go to D.Va, I've got this cool build. 
what other people use don't take that defense matrix long story too long did not listen great reading for when you're on the toilet or at a christmas uh dinner with your family that you don't particularly enjoy but this one this is the one i take i call it standard because of narcissism standard crash down such a good build when you click show build you get taken to the page you go rush down having a queue every three seconds if you neither deal nor take damage the cooldown gets lowered from 10 to 3 seconds. This allows you to rotate between different lanes very effectively and faster than other people do on their mount. Shall I say that again? Other mount. And then the rest doesn't matter as much per se, but this talent alone makes D.Va such a great responder to threats, mercenaries, minion wave push. You just rotate there. And then you go defend the lane with your basic attack damage. Just line up nicely. Other people on their mount. You line up nicely and you just auto attack the wave and it feels so good. You see all those numbers pop up now 24 instead of 21. I mean this is more than a 10% buff to her damage than other people on their mount. It's crazy. And that's it. And that's all she needed. And you know when I predicted the change? This was it wasn't it? You can rewind this video and check it out. It's great. It still means she should be sec second warrior, of course, but she can uh, she can do a lot more with that. Awesome. Garrosh. Here's the big one, guys. Phoenix said release damage was 22 and a half. So this is actually huge, ginormous. Garrosh. Bonus health. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough. Bonus health. What was that page? Exclamation mark builds. Groundbreaker no longer pulls enemy heroes to Garrosh. Incre instead, Groundbreaker now knocks enemy heroes into the air, stunning them for three quarters seconds, and then slowing them by 30% for two seconds. This is interesting. Now I know that the most fun thing to do is to panic together, grab our pitchforks, and mow the lawn, and just do some gardening together. Or, what people sometimes use pitchforks for, is, um, is to start a riot. And although that's so fun to use, so fun to do, I would like to tell you guys that Garrosh right now is probably the most hated hero in the Nexus. Everyone bans him, and although his win rate isn't good, it never stopped people complaining. So this is one of those things where Blizzard had to make a change to his combo, just because people apparently do not enjoy... A non-interactive experience. And the thing is, it is interactive. You can counter Garrosh. And yet, here we go. Okay, here we go. And this is because people don't like playing against it. So I think it's an understandable and a good change by Blizzard to do change Groundbreaker. And I think it's a good one, actually. Think of how this can be used. First of all, Garrosh now finally has a stun in his base kit. Just like many other tanks that are supposed to solo tank. And because they're stunned and then slowed, this gives Garrosh the ability to walk up to them and still flip them. But now there's more counterplay. It's a little bit easier for most of the people to be able to counterplay against it. Um, While taking care of the pull towards my gate and flip it in. I think it's a good change. And then they make Wrecking Ball happen slightly more often. And it costs more mana. And then the Mortal Combo, which is like Diablo's thing. Where you can use one ability to do another one more often. Don't talk with your mouth full. It's not full. It's only like one fourth full. If my mouth is full, I actually would not be able to talk. Um, it doesn't say that it only affects at the edge of the queue, Jamie fan, but that's a good question. Mortal combo. Cooldown reduction granted to Wrecking Ball decrease from 10 to 8. Wind of time through anyways, okay. Now, developer comment. While he is well balanced with regard to his win rate... 
agree. Stats also back this up. Garrus has widely been considered more punitive than other warriors compared to the amount of counterplay he offers. While we love his playstyle and the epic moments he can create, we wanted to reduce the amount of frustration he can cause opponents. We've, under the, we've added a window of time between being hit by Groundbreaker and being thrown into the enemy team. And this is, this is where Garrus needs to walk up to the targets that he queues. That's the window of time they're talking about. And Verotten says it's just the tip. So you need to stun them at the tip. And then the distance of his triangle, you need to walk closer during that three quarter second stun and the 30% extra slow and walk up. Definitely going to make it more difficult to throw in a Li Ming because she can teleport out. But uh, this is what people wanted. They wanted an interactive experience and apparently enough people felt like it was not there. And now, now it is. There's play and counterplay. I think Garros will continue to be banned for a while more. But after a week or two, I think people will figure out he's not nearly as threatening per se. Yeah, maybe you'll add body check to make it more possible to throw people in. I do think his wave clear being bad is uh, going to be difficult. Oh yeah, and they gave him extra health to make him like a little bit stronger across the board as well. I'm eager to try him out, but I wasn't playing him all that much before. And so I don't think I'm going to jump him in right away. Yeah. I think the developer comments straight up make so much sense. And they needed to do what they needed to do. Face shift can now go to minimap portrait. Something Hanzo, something Hanzo. And Butcher fixed an issue preventing Butcher from walking back and only charging into the enemy. Oh no, from using consumable items. Okay. You know what? A fantastic patch. I usually rate patches to determine how much I think they are on point how needed they were, how good the changes were. And I do think I've been critical in the past as well. But overall, I would say 95% approval rating. Great patch. And it should be up on North America right now. You can check out the patch notes yourself on exclamation mark patch. There's a last sentence. What's the last sentence? I don't see it. No Valera nerf on silence. Oh, the last part of the developer comments. Sorry, I didn't see that. Garrosh. Let me check again. Uh, we are planning to make similar changes to other heroes in the future, which are overly frustrating to play against or lack counterplay. Yeah, I think that's fair as well. Valera's 2.75 seconds silence. I think it's a little egregious that it's that long and hasn't been changed. And I guess that should deserve a few minus points. And also Genji's mobility. But I think it's great not just to balance for power, but also to balance for things that are the most frustrating to play against. And it might be that one or two people, for example, Genji and Valera mains, disagree with that. But overall, you want the game to be fun. And there's very few people that complain about Grey main. Although he's very powerful because he is what he is. He's the combined sum of his damage and health output. Done. But others can feel a little... Uh, yeah. Now, this patch is already up in North America. You got Diablo, that's crazy. I'm on the attack. Massive value then. I'm just going to kill a fort for free. Wow, amazing. Time to go. 